You see that bubbling, firing pit of molten rock and think, what if I just toss my garbage in there? I mean, it seems logical enough. Fire hot, garbage gone, problem solved. But before you start dragging your trash bags to the nearest volcanic crater, let me explain why this brilliant idea might not be as genius as it sounds. Today, I'll break down exactly what would happen if we started using volcanoes as nature's ultimate garbage disposal. And trust me, the reality is way more complicated than you might think. First, let's talk about what a volcano actually is, because apparently we need to start with the basics. A volcano isn't just some mountain with anger management issues. It's essentially Earth's way of burping up molten rock, gases, and other materials from deep underground. The molten rock, called magma when it's underground and lava when it reaches the surface, can reach temperatures between 1,300 and 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that is hot enough to melt copper pennies, aluminum cans, and yes, your leftover pizza boxes. The lava you see flowing down volcanic slopes isn't just liquid rock. It's a complex mixture of melted minerals, dissolved gases, and solid rock fragments all swirling together in a super hot soup. The consistency can vary wildly depending on the type of volcano and the composition of the magma. Some lava flows like thick honey, while others move more like molten metal. The temperature and chemical composition determine how the lava behaves, and more importantly, for our garbage disposal dreams, how it would interact with whatever we decide to throw into it. Now, let's imagine you can actually manage to get close enough to a volcano in order to toss something in. First challenge. Most active volcanoes aren't exactly accessible. They're often located in remote areas surrounded by dangerous terrain and constantly monitored by scientists who would probably have some strong opinions about your waste management experiment. But let's just say you somehow make it to the edge of a lava lake with a bag of household trash. What happens next depends entirely on what you're throwing in. Let's start with organic waste, like food scraps and paper. Now, the moment this material hits the lava, it would instantly vaporize. We're talking about temperatures that are several times hotter than your kitchen oven's highest setting. Organic materials would burst into flames before they even touched the lava's surface, creating a brief fireball and then releasing gases into the air. The carbon-based materials would break down into simpler compounds, primarily carbon dioxide and water vapor, along with various other gases depending on what exactly you threw in. But here's where things get interesting and a bit problematic. When organic matter burns at these extreme temperatures, it doesn't just disappear cleanly. It releases all sorts of gases and particles out into the atmosphere. Food waste contains nitrogen compounds that would create nitrogen oxides. Paper and cardboard would release not just carbon dioxide, but also various chemicals used in the manufacturing process. Even seemingly innocent banana peels would release compounds that could contribute to air pollution. Plastic waste presents an entirely different nightmare scenario. Modern plastics are incredibly complex materials made from petroleum products and loaded with additives, stabilizers, flame retardants, and colorants. When plastic hits lava temperatures, it doesn't just melt and disappear. It undergoes a process called thermal decomposition, breaking down into smaller molecules and releasing an absolutely toxic cocktail of gases. Polyethylene bags would release hydrocarbons and potentially create ethylene gas. PVC materials would release hydrogen chloride gas, which is incredibly corrosive and toxic. Polystyrene foam would break down into styrene monomers and other aromatic compounds. The flame retardants in electronics and furniture would release brominated compounds that are persistent environmental pollutants. We're essentially talking about creating a chemical weapons factory every time someone tosses a plastic bottle into a volcano. The heavy metals and other additives in plastic present another layer of problems. These don't just disappear when heated. Lead, cadmium, chromium, and other toxic metals would either vaporize into the atmosphere or remain in the lava as it cools. Either way, we're talking about dispersing dangerous materials into the environment in ways that would make current pollution problems look like a minor inconvenience. Electronic waste adds another dimension of horror to this scenario. Modern electronics contain dozens of different metals, rare earth elements, and toxic compounds. Circuit boards contain lead, mercury, cadmium, and bromated flame retardants. Batteries contain lithium, cobalt, nickel, and various acids. When this electronic cocktail hits lava temperatures, it would create a toxic gas cloud that would make industrial accidents look like a pleasant spring breeze. The rare earth elements in electronics don't just vanish when heated. These materials would either vaporize and disperse into the atmosphere or remain dissolved in the cooling lava. Either scenario represents a massive waste of valuable resources and a significant environmental contamination event. We'd essentially be taking materials that took enormous amounts of energy and environmental damage to extract and refine, then dispersing them randomly into the environment in the most dangerous forms. But let's talk about the physical mechanics of actually getting garbage into an active volcano. Now, most people picture volcanoes as easily accessible mountain peaks with convenient lava lakes at the top, like some kind of geological drive-through window. The reality, though, is far more complicated and dangerous. 
active volcanoes are constantly releasing toxic gases, including sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon monoxide. The air around an active volcano can literally kill you before you even get close enough to toss anything in. The ground around active volcanoes is also very unstable and unpredictable. What looks like solid rock might be a thin crust over molten material. Volcanic bombs, chunks of molten rock ejected from the volcano, regularly rain down around active sites. The heat radiating from lava flows can cause severe burns from hundreds of feet away. Getting close enough to actually throw garbage into a volcano would require specialized protective equipment and extensive safety measures. And even if we could somehow safely transport garbage to volcanoes, the logistics would be absolutely insane. Most active volcanoes are located in remote areas with no infrastructure. We'd need to build roads, transportation systems, and waste processing facilities in some of the most geologically unstable and dangerous locations on Earth. The environmental impact of building this infrastructure as well would likely exceed any theoretical benefits of volcano disposal. The scale problem is equally ridiculous. Humans generate approximately 2.01 billion tons of municipal solid waste annually, and this number is growing rapidly. Even the most active volcanoes process relatively small amounts of materials compared to our waste production. I mean, we'd need to identify dozens of suitable volcanoes and somehow coordinate a global waste transportation network to sites that are, by their very nature, unpredictable and dangerous. Let's also consider what happens to volcanic emissions. When volcanoes erupt naturally, they already contribute to air pollution and climate change. The 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora released so much material into the atmosphere that it caused global climate anomalies and crop failures. Adding massive amounts of garbage-derived pollution to volcanic emissions would amplify these effects dramatically. The gases released from burning garbage in volcanoes wouldn't just stay local. Volcanic plumes can reach high into the atmosphere and spread globally. We'd essentially be creating a worldwide air pollution distribution system. The toxic compounds from plastics and electronics would circulate in the atmosphere and eventually fall back to Earth as contaminated precipitation, affecting ecosystems and human health far from the original volcano. There's also the issue of volcanic ash and tephra. When volcanoes erupt, they don't just release gases. They also eject solid particles that can travel hundreds or thousands of miles. If we're adding garbage-derived materials to this mix, we'd be spreading toxic contamination across vast areas every time a volcano erupts. Communities hundreds of miles away from the volcano would be dealing with ash contaminated with heavy metals, toxic organic compounds, and other garbage-derived pollutants. The impact on local ecosystems around volcanoes would also be catastrophic. Volcanic environments often support unique ecosystems that adapt to the specific conditions around these geological features. Adding massive amounts of toxic pollution to these environments would destroy these specialized habits and potentially drive endemic species to extinction. From a resource recovery perspective, throwing garbage into volcanoes represents an enormous waste. Many materials in our waste stream contain valuable resources that can be recovered and reused. Metals, plastics, and other materials require significant energy and environmental impact to produce. Instead of recovering these materials through recycling and reuse, volcano disposal would permanently destroy them while creating pollution. The monitoring and safety systems around active volcanoes would also be compromised by garbage disposal operations. Scientists rely on precise measurements of volcanic gases and emissions to predict eruptions and assess volcanic hazards. Adding garbage-derived emissions to the mix would make it much more difficult to distinguish between natural volcanic activity and pollution from waste disposal, potentially compromising early warning systems that protect nearby communities. Even if we could somehow solve all the technical and environmental problems, there are significant legal and political barriers. Most active volcanoes are located in national parks, protected areas, or territories with strict environmental regulations. International agreements on transboundary pollution would likely prohibit the kind of atmospheric contamination that volcanic garbage disposal would create. The economic cost would be staggering. Building the infrastructure to transport garbage to volcanoes, developing the safety systems to protect workers, and dealing with the environmental and health consequences would cost far more than current waste management approaches. We'd essentially be spending enormous amounts of money to create a more dangerous and environmentally damaging waste disposal system. So, let's recap this whole volcanic waste management adventure. Volcanoes aren't magical garbage disposals. They're complex geological systems that would turn our trash into toxic gas clouds and spread pollution around the world. Throwing garbage into volcanoes would create more problems than it solves, cost more money than current solutions, and potentially kill anyone brave enough to try it. Now go stick to regular recycling and waste reduction. At least your garbage truck driver won't judge you for not having a death wish.